Good morning to all of you. Thank you for coming out for the second in our series of uh, Week of Renewal. You know, some years ago, our leader, Ruthita Fike, had been reading a book, Fresh Wind, Fresh Fire by Jim Cimbala. And in that book, Cimbala had described how at their church they took a week off at the beginning of the year to renew their sense of commitment, their commitment to the gospel, their commitment to each other, their commitment to be led by the Spirit. And Ruthita said, what if we did that uh, at the beginning of the year in January? Take a week to reflect. Now, there's never an, a non-busy week in our work, right? Uh, we work hard here. And uh, so to take a week off doing anything, well, we're 24-7, really, because people's needs are occurring all the time. But we take a few moments during this week to think again about what God has done for us, about his calling to us, and uh, to reflect on what that will mean for the year that we've just now entered. I want to welcome especially those who are watching from remote sites at our FMO and our dormitories and other places around the, uh, the campus. We're broadcasting this, so many who couldn't come over here to the medical center, to the children's hospital, uh, will be able to see this on television. I also want to invite you to watch Ruthita Fike's devotional online at Loma Linda Renewal. Dot org, Loma Linda Renewal, all one word, dot org. There you can see Ruthita in a five-minute devotional that she's taped ahead of time. I also would like to tell you that there's a clothing drive tomorrow and also on Thursday, just tomorrow and, th and Thursday, and there are drop-off sites that you'll see in the Medical Center Library. And also, for those of you who are in some of the remote sites, it might be easier for you to go to the Drayson Center. And uh, these... these um, Items of clothing will be put to good use uh, for people in need in our region. we would be blessed, <coughs> excuse me, by music this morning uh, from somebody who's come to be a friend of mine, Kahari Washington. Some of you know Dr. Olivia Moses, who's our leader for wellness here on our campus. Uh, the reason that Kahari looks so healthy and well is because he's married to Olivia Moses, uh, who leads us in wellness, and Kahari's going to play his saxophone for us. We're looking forward to that blessing, Kahari.
you, Kahari. When I was about five years old growing up in Oregon, uh, sitting on my bed one night, I asked my mother if she'd teach me to sing a song. And she taught me that song. And so it brought back great memories. When she sang it, it didn't sound quite like that, actually. <laughs> so thank you. Kahari uh, works in real estate here in the, in the area. And um, if you ever get tired of that day job, I think you, you have another alternative. Growing up at the same time in the state of Oregon was our speaker this morning. We've been friends since we were teenagers. We can tell a lot of stories. We agreed, we covenanted actually not to tell them. Um, but uh, Dr. Judy Storfiel earned her PhD at the University of Michigan. We recruited her from the University of Illinois in Chicago recently where she was the executive director for the Center for Healthcare Innovation. She's also been a major uh, administrator in academics. She's a, a nurse and is now our chief nursing officer here at Loma Linda University Medical Center and for our health, entire health system and uh, has broad responsibilities for uh, patient care. Dr. Storfiel, Judy, my friend, come and talk to us. I didn't know we had a covenant. <laughs> we'll talk about that. <laughs> We've all faced many challenges, some big, some small, some overwhelming. Uh, and this morning I thought I'd share with you some of God's promises that have helped me through some difficult times. I used Dr. Winslow's Bible last night, so we are doubly blessed. <laughs> Genesis 28:15, I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. This one is very near and dear to me. I'm going to share some stories about some of my struggles and how this helped. I had the pleasure and the privilege of living in Beirut, Lebanon for three years some time ago. It was probably some of the best years of my life. We loved Lebanon, loved Beirut, loved the people, the environment, the Mediterranean Sea and the mountains. It was, it was lovely. But towards the end of our stay, we did find ourselves in the middle of a war. Now, most of you think I will never be in a war. I see that on TV and suddenly here you are with bullets hitting the house. Um, two little boys that you're trying to protect no one being able to get close to you to evacuate you and, and wondering what in the world are we going to do. Were we brought here for this? One evening we could hear the fighting. Our house sat on a hillside and overlooked the city and the Mediterranean. It was a beautiful view. We could hear the fighting in the city and then we could see it, feel it and hear it moving up the hillside. The um, Lebanese army was fighting the Palestinians. We had a Palestinian camp at the bottom of the hill. The army was at the top of the hill, and we were in between. Um, the good news is we had a bomb shelter in our house. We had four, it was a complex of four houses with a bomb shelter. The bad news is they put in an exposed door and a window. Um, so we had to try to shore those up and sneak down the back stairs and get into the bomb shelter. There was a group of us there as the fighting moved up the hill and the noise got louder and louder. And we formed a prayer circle. So if you can just imagine that noise around you uh, and prayers going around this circle, holding hands, two little boys on each side, some in Arabic, some in English. By the time it became my turn, I was sure they were going to burst through the door. It sounded like they were just on the outside. In the middle of my prayer, it was silence, a sudden silence. And we were in shock. We, we finished our prayer circle and went upstairs and found that there was a ceasefire. I've never had such a dramatic answer to prayer. Another verse, for I am your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. So fast forward now a few years, many years, that little four-year-old that was in the bomb shelter with me <clears throat> is now a father and I am a grandmother, a very, very young grandmother. <laughs> I said, this is wonderful. I looked in the mirror one day and said, but I'm too young to be a grandmother. 
It's amazing for a child that you've never met before, as soon as they're born, how quickly you bond. And I found myself shortly after his birth in a very strange place that I never expected to be. I never expected to be in a bomb shelter. I never expected to be in the NICU at Loma Linda University. And I'm sitting there holding this child who they told me would not live through the day. And for 12 hours, I rocked him. And I felt him hold, pull into me and take the energy from my body. And we prayed through that day, and he survived. 1 Corinthians 8, 3 says, but whoever loves God is known by God. One of the most wonderful promises in the body, the Bible, I think, is that one, whoever loves God is known by God. What a privilege it is to know that God loves us, that God knows us as individuals. And I think about where I'm going with my life. I never expected to be here. I think it's a little bit of Jerry and his persistence, but I was very reticent, and I said no for about a year. Um, but that wasn't my, it was not my will, it was God's will, I believe. So God protects us, he leads us, he loves us, and he's our friend. Let's uh, take a moment to be in prayer together. We thank you, Lord God, for calling us to a place where we know that you bless us every day by your spirit. Hundreds of people come here for care, and they count on us to reach out with your love and compassion. May we be reminded of that very sacred privilege that's ours today. May those we teach and those for whom we care know that we are your servants, we are instruments of your love, and may that be very evident in our work today, I pray in Jesus' name.